Welcome to a time of chapel worship. It is the fifth week of Lent and our theme today is Jesus is talking about the death that will come. Our first hymn is Love Divine All Love Six Selling, a wonderful Charles Wesley hymn. Our Bible reading for today is from John chapter 12, verses 20 to 36. Some Greeks were among those who had gone to Jerusalem to worship during the festival. They went to Philip, he was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and the two of them went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has now come for the Son of Man to receive great glory. I am telling you the truth. 
a grain of wheat remains no more than a single grain unless it is dropped into the ground and dies. If it does die, then it produces many grains. Whoever loves their own life will lose it. Whoever hates their own life will, in this world will keep it for life eternal. Whoever wants to serve me must follow me so that my servant will be with me where I am and my Father will honor anyone who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Shall I say, Father, do not let this hour come upon me? But that is why I came, so that I might go through this hour of suffering. Father, bring glory to your name. Then a voice spoke from heaven, I have brought glory to it, and I will do so again. The crowd standing there heard the voice, and some of them said it was thunder, while others said, An angel spoke to him. But Jesus said to them, It was not for my sake that this voice spoke, but for yours. Now is the time for this world to be judged. Now the ruler of this world will be overthrown. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. In saying this, he indicated the kind of death he was going to suffer. The crowd answered, Our law tells us that the Messiah will live forever. How then can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus answered, The light will be among you a little longer. Continue on your way while you have the light, so that the darkness will not come upon you. For the one who walks in the dark does not know where they are going. Believe in the light, then, while you have it, so that you will be people of the light. May God bless us by these words. Amen. As always, there's so many interesting things in this story, as there are in all Bible stories, not just on the surface, but things underneath. What we read starts with the information that there were some Greeks going to the Passover. Now, they must have been converts. They called them proselytes. But they went to Philip. And Philip is a Greek name. Philippos means horse lover. Now, was Philip a Greek? Or was Philip just a Hebrew with a Greek name, as was not uncommon in the time of Jesus? We don't know. But it is clear that the Greeks felt a connection to Philip, either because of who he was or because of his name. And Philip comes to Andrew, Peter's brother, and together they go and say to Jesus, there are people who want to see you. And Jesus begins to talk. Jesus says, if a seed is left on the table, it doesn't do any good. A single seed is not enough for food. And it doesn't do any good. But Jesus says, if you take that seed, that grain of wheat, that one grain of wheat, and you plant it, and it dies to itself, and it changes, then something miraculous happens. Through the death, fruit comes, multiplied fruit. And so Jesus is saying, as he says in other places in different ways, that if you love your life in this world so much that all you want to do is hold on to it, all you want in your life to be is a seed sitting on the table, then nothing will happen of it. But if you discover that your life is worth more in eternity, and you're willing to 
serve Christ, then your life will be multiplied. Now, Jesus says in other places, some will multiply 40 times, 60 times, 100 times. We don't know what our life will multiply when God is working through us and the Spirit is gathering fruit. But Jesus says, if you love this life and you like the things around you, if you like food and if you like sparkly things and you like possessions and you like events that are purely uh, material, then your life will be caught only in this world and not beyond. But if you die to this world, as we are told is part of the Christian maturity, the Christian life, then great things will happen. We won't necessarily know all the things that happen, but God knows, and it makes an impact on other people. That if we die to self and live for Christ, we are promised great things will happen in eternity. And so Jesus said, I do not love this world and this life more than I love you. And so I am going to die. And am I going to say, don't let this happen. It's going to be too hard. That would not make sense, despite the suffering that is going to come. Because I came for this reason. We are placed in this world for the love of people, that we can spread the good news that God loves us, that Jesus died for us, and the price of sin is paid. The ticket to eternity is right on the table in front of us, it's fully paid. We pick it up and we carry it, as the gospel song says, life is like a mountain railroad traveling the train right into heaven. Sometimes we might wonder, like, why am I around? What, what's up life all about? But we always have a purpose. The purpose is to let God live in us and transform us, to let the Holy Spirit flow through us, not to become discouraged because we don't do things we should or we do things we shouldn't. That's part of this material world. The Spirit overcomes that when we say, sorry for what I did, sorry for what I missed. The Spirit takes us and can proclaim the love of God through us because as I keep saying, we are the temple of God. God lives in us and the Spirit proclaims the glory of God that is in us and around us. And the love of Jesus will be shown to others. Every moment, every breath, we have a reason for being here. God is with us. God is proclaiming the light to the world through us. This image of light and dark is a very common one that John uses. That people who walk in light take opportunities as they come. I just read today that there are some people who can see a field of roses, but notice nothing but the thorns. There are those who can see a weed, and they perceive nothing but the wildflower. God is the very best of what the universe can be. And yes, we may become discouraged at times. Memories may overwhelm us, but God is bigger than our failures. God is more magnificent 
than the things in the past that would drag us down. God's glory is greater than the limitations that we have in this world. God is bigger than that. Greater is the one who is in you than the one who is in the world. Jesus says the leader of this world, the ruler of this world, is overthrown. We sometimes think the devil has more power than the devil really has. The devil has no power, none whatsoever, unless we allow it. The devil tempts us with the things we want most. And so, as we live our lives, if we want the cross of Christ more and more and more, the material things would attract us that the devil can use to throw us off track, to derail us from our purpose of showing love and living love and experiencing love. But God says, through Christ, the ruler of this world is overthrown. The devil has no power except to tempt us. We can encourage one another if we know that somebody's struggling with a problem, discouragement or loneliness or whatever it may be. We can encourage them in the love of Christ and say it will be okay. It is okay because God is okay. There was a movement a number of decades ago, I'm okay, you're okay. And it was kind of neat in a way because it meant you don't have to be perfect to be okay, but it misses something. I'm okay because God is perfect. There's nothing in me that's okay except that God lives in me and God transforms me from all imperfections and failures into magnificent fruit because if I am a seed that dies in the ground for Christ, then that seed grows into a plant and the plant produces how many seeds? In one head of wheat, there are so many seeds, all from one seed. I'd like to end with this story. Jesus was standing in the temple and he was watching people giving their offerings. And rich people made a big show of how much money they were putting in. And Jesus was not impressed by their quantity. And then a widow came and she kind of hid away and she dropped in the equivalent of a penny, two coins, the equivalent of a penny. And Jesus looked at her and he said to the disciples, she has given magnificently because she gave 100%. You see, it's not the quantity that impresses God. It is the heart which gives. If we die to self, if what we do, we want God to get the glory, for God to get the credit. If we live for others and show God's love because God's love is in us and we love, so that when someone irritates us, we will become more and more likely to pray for them instead of striking out at them. We can do it despite the temptations the devil puts in front of us because God is love. Jesus died for us. That love is so great. That's the greatest theme of Lent. Jesus loves us and dies for us. And we can give back our death. That We die to self. We die to the things that we like, that would distract us. And God is glorified. God is love. We live that love. We experience that love. We give that love.
We thank you, God, for the wondrous love you show us, for your presence with us, and for giving us a reason to live a purpose in your realm and your kingdom. We pray that you would help us to see every day more and more of you and less and less of the things that would distract us. O oh God, we pray for those who need to keep a focused life, for leadership, for those who are caregivers, for medical people, for emergency people who have to keep a focus. May your spear be with them and help them to be protectors and healers. O oh God, we give ourselves to you in a new way so that we may be all you need us to be for your glory, to the benefit of those around us. Let us pray the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our second hymn is My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. And I've chosen kind of a modernized version of it because it seems so fun to sing.
Go in the joy of the Lord, knowing that what you do for God will be wonderful.